<laughs> Finally arrived. Makes me really appreciate console gaming. Find out why. Hey everybody, it's Brett from Harper's Podcast, and yep, this just got delivered to me, and it's all set up and ready to go. I'm not going to bother showing you any footage, because you can find it out online, and it's pretty straightforward once it's all working, it, it works. That, that's it. And everyone's playing Half-Life Alex, even though it was released in 2020, hasn't been updated since 2022, but let's hope the better integration across the board with PC VR and the PlayStation VR headset improves over time with this product. Because from my experience with using uh, Sony products and being a big fan of the PlayStation overall, having had it since the PS1 all the way through to the PS5 currently, is that Sony tend to release a product and they're very lackluster with regards to actually releasing updates or listening to consumer feedback when it comes to their consumer products overall, which is in one way really annoying, very frustrating. And I get a slight feeling that this might turn out to be a similar story for this adapter alone because now it's on the market, now it's it's out there, people are using it, but there are a lot of issues that people are having for some of the most simplest and let's say let's be honest, some of the most stupidest things uh, to to be encountered with setting up a product that essentially comes from a company that excels in plug and play functionality. So the main issue that I had, like everybody else, was the USB connectivity. So I, ha I ended up buying another USB adapter, which was the TP-Link uh, UB500. So it was a Bluetooth 5.0 uh, Bluetooth adapter which it conforms to the configuration of the PlayStation VR 2 and the console itself being Bluetooth 5.0. So that mitigated uh, that issue. It did connect through the PC, PC PlayStation app and everything was detected. But it got to the final step, nothing would happen. It would not go beyond that step for some peculiar reason. And the only reason was, is that I need to have that Bluetooth dongle on a USB extension cable away from the actual box. This actual black box was literally, must have been killing the signal for some peculiar reason because the moment I did that, everything worked. Now, I don't get it. Why would something as simple as putting a USB, at like a $15 to $20 or a $5 USB dongle onto an extension cord after spending $100 on this. Now, in Australia, this retailed for $97 through Amazon or JB Hi-Fi, depending on where you're getting it from. Luckily for Amazon Prime, you don't have to pay shipping because you're already paying for a subscription anyway, so that's great. But I, I just feel that I, I honestly would have paid $150 if it included the USB extension cord, a display display port cable, and the USB dongle or USB uh, Bluetooth connectivity already built into the box itself because seriously, it's pretty light. I'm, pre I'm sure a little chip would fit quite effectively. But um, I, yeah, that was the bit that really got me. I'm just, you know, I had this issue of trying to get it past the final step, honestly, for about two hours and I feel stupid for not having grabbed the cable earlier that I had in the shed. I ran out there, I grabbed it, plugged it in, bang, it worked. And I'm like, oh, are you serious? But then this is where the real fun began, configuring it to your PC to work effectively with whatever title you wanted to try. This is where it comes down to the, the blissful element of the, the console and the PC master race. So I love PC, I enjoy it. I, I play the Battlefield series, don't hate me for it. Um, I know it's even been it's been bad since past uh, Battlefield 4. I get that, but it is uh, gaming on PC is still paramount with uh, consoles, you know, walking side by side currently. In my personal opinion, with regards to the, the technology that you can get on a console, with um, you know, comparing it overall. But anyway, that aside, uh, the the unfortunate nature is that with PCs and PC gaming overall, as we're all aware, there's millions of com configurations out there depending on how an individual uses a computer. So this one singular product has to conform with all those different configurations overall. Maybe uh, another six months of testing 
might have been a good idea, but who knows how long it's been on the cards for that they've been, this product has been in development. I can't say it would be that long because of how simplified the whole thing really is. Like it's essentially just a breakout box for an adapter to plug into your PC and then everything works. But on top of that, you've also got the fact that um, updating of the software. Since it's out now, Sony's reputation, as I stated earlier, has been a little bit lackluster with support overall when they start to release products like this. So the console is one thing I can understand that and being able to update their controllers overall, which is the big thing too, and the way it's integrated into other t other TVs and the um, uh, da -da -da -da. stuff overall. Can't think of anything. Just just leave me alone. It, otherwise, it's yeah. That that's my concern. Like it, it's it's out on, it's it's out in the wild now. Um, people are going to use it, whether they want to update it, whether they want to support it, it's going to come down to either Steam VR uh, updates overall to improve the connectivity or the PlayStation app to be updated consistently. Uh, the headset firmware might need to be upgraded as well to improve the uh, detection element when it's connected to a graphics card. We just don't know. And that is one thing that just is the nature of PC gaming. You know, you have to wait for a developer to actually go, okay, there's enough of a problem now that we need to release an update. But the beauty of consoles at the same time, if you've got the PSVR2 headset, one single cable, plugs into the port, go through the setup, ready to go. Plug and play at your fingertips. And that's the way it's been with consoles for, for eons now. You got a big, got a big cartridge, plug it in, Turn it on, away you go. Unless you're blowing out the connectors on the bottom of the console cartridge. <laughs> so, and that was something that everyone would truly miss. And those that have to download games will never understand. I'll never understand the, the frustration of having an NES console cartridge and having to just delicately blow that little bit of dust off for it to actually getting, get it working. So anyway, it's out. Oh, look, I highly recommend it. I really do. If it doesn't work, it's unfortunate that it won't work, but there, there has to be a solution. There, there is a lot of help out there. There's a lot of YouTube clips, a lot of people um, getting into it to, you know, just exploring what PC VR has to offer. And for those of you that, that have brought the, the PS VR 2 headset to use predominantly on your PC because it is, it is more cost effective than any other headset out there, honestly, thumbs up to you because when it was connected, it, it was quite clear. It was quite good. So. Welcome, enjoy, have fun, see you on the next video, take care, like, subscribe, all that, thank you, love you all.